Hey everyone, welcome to Monthly Project number 30, and uh, this month we're doing a video game collab. So all of my patrons have come together to do some video game art, and uh, we're going to put it all together in a huge piece. We've done big collaborations like this before. Uh, the first one here is a Marvel tribute, so we just did all the Marvel characters, and people got to pick them one by one. It was a really fun piece to do. And there's also the Spider-Man Villains collaboration. And this one was really cool and a lot of fun. We all got to pick our favorite villains and draw them. So I thought video games would be a great theme to jump into next. It's so broad, there's a lot of characters to do. So let's dive straight into them and we'll have a look at what everyone's done. Each month I pick three submissions to critique. Uh, so congratulations Camille, Lucas and Tropex Art. These look awesome and I'm gonna dive into these critiques very soon. Okay, it's time to reveal this massive collab done by each of my patrons, and here it is. Have a look at this. Absolutely epic piece. It is really like a huge picture. I think there's like 60 characters here, and let's zoom in a little and get a closer look. So much to look at. A lot of favorites there. We've got Final Fantasy, and there's, there's Mario, Sonic, Pac-Man, Metal Gear Solid, Horizon Zero Dawn. We're going to dive into these one by one and we'll get a closer look at each of these characters but I just think this is absolutely phenomenal. I really love this. Red Dead Redemption up there, my absolute favourite. And uh, The Last of Us over here. Earthworm Jim, bit of Donkey Kong. So yeah, let's dive into this absolute mammoth of a picture. We're going to look at these characters one by one so let's check it out. Really top job to all of you here. I think this is fantastic and I love doing these big collaborations with you all. So maximum effort. You guys have just done an amazing job. I'm going to show these now one by one and starting with Gavin. I really love your Sonic. That foreshortening is amazing and uh, just great overall. And uh, Craig, I really love Portal and you've just done an amazing job. That pose is really cool, super dynamic. Mario and Luigi here by Carl, and I love this. I think they're really cool. I love your style. And uh, Jason has done Miles Morales from the PS5 game, and uh, you've just done a great job of that. Great pose. And uh, Joe, you've done Mega Man, and I love this pose. It's so energetic. It's just bursting out. It's awesome. And Jose has done this monster piece here. This is just beautiful. Have a look at this close up. I've really got to zoom in to appreciate it. And um, those details, man, you've just really outdone yourself here. I can't get over how amazing this is. And Kyle has done the clown from Twisted Metal. I really love what you've done here. He just looks absolutely awesome. And Leto Arts, you've done Horizon Zero Dawn's Aloy. She looks amazing. This is beautiful work. And Renee, you're always killing it. And you've done Superior Spider-Man and Iron Man from Midnight Suns. They look great. And Jan has done Shadow from the Sonic series and Cuphead. These look really, really professional. You've got such a nice style. And because we've got so much more, I'm going to let the music play and showcase all of the rest. Enjoy.
All right, it's time for the critiques now. So let's start with Camille. And you've done two really awesome pieces here. You've got the Prince of Persia uh, here, which looks great, and uh, Geralt the Witcher. And that looks really awesome. Do you know what I love about your work is your um, poses. I really think that you've got some really dynamic poses here. And they look really good. I think the main thing that I'm having trouble with with yours is probably just the... Um, I think it's an overuse maybe of the sketchy uh, cross-hatching kind of style. But mainly as well with the dark shadows. Uh, it's, a, it's a little too strong. And, uh, and maybe just some tidying as well of the, of the inks. And I think these would just come together nicely. So I'm going to dive into them a bit. Let's let's see what I can help you with. And I think I'm going to focus on... I'll focus on Prince of Persia to start with. So I'm just going through and I want to start with the main outlines. The ones that are going to hold the character together. And, uh, you know, bring out all of the different anatomy sections. Things like that. So basically just without the, the, uh, the cross-hatching and that kind of shading technique. So I'm going to start with this kind of base and we'll go from there and I'll build on that and show you how we could probably approach it in a better way. And I've just noticed that I, th I think this arm here, I just, I really feel like this needs to have a little bit more length in it or some more bulk around the wrist area. So I'm just going to use Liquify, one of my favorite tools to kind of work with this. Uh, but mainly I feel like I need to get give a little bit more a bit more length in that arm just a tiny bit not much okay there we go so I've, I've done the main kind of first set of outlines and I think what I'm going to do is break this into three stages of outlines to try and get the technique that I think you're after because I understand that this is a style that you're trying to go with so and I respect that I, I really love that you're trying to you know have your own style do your own kind of take it's kind of a comic style, uh, very edgy kind of cross hatching, uh, and I feel like with some polishing and cleaning up, I, th I feel like this will really just help a lot because you've got the energy in your poses. Your anatomy is really good. I don't, I barely have any changes apart from that slight adjustment of the hand. You can see there's there's really nothing wrong with the body. So you're doing really good in all of that. I would start with some outlines like this. And, um, and then the next stage, uh, I would really like to try and push the dark heavy shading that you like to try here. See down here in the darker areas? So especially in this clothing here. So if you're going to have clothing that you know is going to uh, be dark, like a dark brown, then you can really pack in that heavy shading. So very similar to what you've done over here. I can, I can just start really putting in all that really heavy dark shading and now I'm running with those those streaks in the clothing though so when he's lifting his leg there I can really you know have that material stretching across and as I'm going through I am throwing in some you know kind of sketchy lines to get that style that you're after some streaks to kind of flow with those now I did throw in a bottom foot underneath here I really feel like there needed to be a foot there uh, I think that's important to kind of show just helps the pose kind of read a little bit better, I think. Another thing that I want to point out while I'm at it, I'm just doing the hair, um, the forehead. I, I feel like you just needed more of a forehead here. So I raised it up here. You can see where yours starts, and I've raised mine up just a bit more. So there we go. That's the dark shadows, you know. So I've really added in some heavy black shading now. Um, and the way it works is... You know, you got to think about the material that it's going to go on. So, like I said, these brown pants—they're dark. So you can have, you can really pack in that bl black shading. But when you're going to get to areas like the skin, which will be a lighter kind of tone, I would, I would tone down the the dark shading, the heavy shading on that. Even with when you get to pure black here, I wouldn't do it as much because it's a, a lighter area. Yeah, so anyway, let's move on and I'll try and get some of this cross hatching going. So when, when using cross hatching, especially in these light areas, I'm aiming for any shadow area and I'm doing some light streaks across, but I can spread them out more. So what you'll do is when you get to a darker area, you know, you, you can kind of merge them. See the cross hatching? You can merge that cross hatching. And then as it gets to the light, and starts to blend out to the light and you want to gradient, gradiate that out, you can space those right out like that. You see that? 
see how these lines are getting way more spaced out and as they get into the darker area you start to thicken them up and then merge them as they get to pure black and that's a really good technique to do cross hatching and it does take some time but it is worth it and then you can start doing the actual cross hatching so going one direction and then the other way if you want to so and sometimes you'll do really long streaks so mix it up with super long streaks like this okay and then down to really short streaks when you get to uh, areas that are but the whole idea of this is just not to have an overload of them use them where they're needed and um, and don't do too much and I think then you'll be fine there we go so something like that and you can see how it's just a, a little less around here uh, a little finer when it comes to the the cross hatching and I think you letting the actual line works do most of the work is where it's at so i think i'm talking about this part here so let that part shine the most and then add these extras on as fine details rather than merging it all into one and and it, it just gets a little overwhelming and focusing on those you know getting that clarity in the in the outlines the ones that hold everything together yeah, great work there, Camille. I hope that helps, that critique. And uh, yeah, keep up the awesome work. All right, next up is Lucas. And you've done Nathan Drake. And this is really cool. I love Nathan Drake. I'm a massive fan of Uncharted. I'm so glad that you did him. And um, yeah, I really think this is really cool. I think this is a really cool pose. Um, I'm going to try to help you with a few different things. And I know I have already kind of helped you a little bit with this before uh, through Discord and my Patreon because um, sometimes I'll give it a little bit of feedback here and there. Um, and we did that through the feedback frenzy section on my Patreon. But I'd love to go more in depth. Um, I think there's a few more things I can point out. So let's have a look. Overall, I think it does look a lot like Nathan Drake. I'd just love to adjust the face a little bit, maybe the mouth there and the teeth. So I'm just going to draw over your your picture just so we can see uh, the changes there's a couple of just slight changes that I'd like to adjust in the face uh, because you're very close like the, the likeness is there it's just a couple of things that I'd like to point out one of the main things is Nathan Drake's nose so he, he tends to have a little dip his nose dips down more but yours seems to be kind of pointing up a little bit and then the teeth and the mouth I would like to have just a little bit smaller overall but still have the same expression and that same clenching teeth kind of thing going on and uh, but I really think that it just needs to be refined a little more uh, so it's not so open and that will fix that issue there all right so here's a few references of Nathan Drake and you can kind of see what I mean about the nose drop there see how it points down whereas uh, in your original see those nostrils kind of point upwards so I'd like to kind of fix that um, and drop that nose down and the mouth is slightly smaller the difference here is the rendering I would say can get a little harsh around the neck area here I think just having the line work kind of you know display these muscles coming through would would it be all that you would need so I'm putting a streak through there and just a little line there and you can have your collarbone um, through here like that um, and that's fine but when it comes to the rendering so there's your character there. I'd actually probably tone down the intensity of that shading around that neck there. So it's really just about toning down that rendering. Um, I'd probably even add another a level of cell shading throughout the character there. So you can kind of see I'm trying to just blend that harsh kind of edge there. But the rendering around the nose here is a little too harsh as well. So I'm just going to fix that up. And then I'll pull that shine up on his cheek more. You can kind of see where I'm getting at. Um, this is before and after. The rendering was just a little too harsh before. What I'm going to do is just uh, see if we can layer over the new line work. All right, there we go. So I've just gone over. Um, here's the original. And you can just see what I mean about the, the uh, I think it's too harsh, these sharp kind of cell shaded parts. Um, and then if we just tone it down or blend a little bit more I feel like it'll it'll help a lot so see with the neck what I mean the neck was the main part here a little bit too many ridges and things like that so I've toned those down 
and uh, tried to ease it off a little bit, so it kind of helps, and then, yeah, blended. I also wanted to mention with the clothing as well, um, I'd love to see a few more wrinkles added, so creases, uh, when that leg is lifting, yeah, we can have a little bit more out there, and um, on the other side as well can kind of, you know, we need to see that zip in the middle, and then as we go down the leg, I'd love to see some folds, um, you know, creases where the leg would bend more, we can add more in there, smooth it out when you get to longer parts of the leg that might drape down more, but then as you get to where the shoe is, you can bunch it up, stuff like that, so I'd love to see a little bit more of that used throughout. So you can see before, um, it was just a little too clean, a little too straight down, so I really wanted to add a lot more wrinkles to that. And that foot uh, coming down as well, I think it might be shown the wrong way because at the moment it's it, it's kind of like beveled, like that's the contouring there, whereas it kind of really needs to go the, the other way, which is what I've done here. I've, I've really got it going the, the opposite way down you know, as, as the leg goes down like that, okay? I think I'd really love to see this hook, um, you know, flipped up the opposite way. So that when his arm, you know, it really looks like his arm's a little further back. So that it kind of really makes use of this empty space up here. Really completes the pose, if you know what I mean. And also the contouring in his arm should be... So it's kind of like in the distance a little more. Because of this awesome perspective that you've got going. You kind of want to run with that. And have the arm going back in space a little bit more. Okay, so I'd rather... I'd rather it do that and kind of, it's like flinging up the uh, the hook there. So now we really get use of that empty space up there and it's kind of adds a lot more action to this pose as well. I kind of really like the way that, that kind of works there. So, And the last thing is this gun just needs to come out more. We need more room for that arm there. So, but yeah, there we go. Sorry, I've made a bit of a mess of it, but um, <laughs> you can kind of see the difference there uh, with the pose, especially just throwing that arm back like that. I think that'll help a lot. But yeah, I hope that helps, Lucas. I, I really love what you've done. So keep up the great work. And for the last critique, we've got Tropex Art and you've done Ezio from Assassin's Creed 2. And this is really cool. I like the dynamic pose you've got here very dynamic and i especially love the texture once you zoom in you've got this really nice kind of clothing kind of texture there and i like that i think it works really well so um let's dive into the critique there's just a few things that i'd like to kind of point out and again i know i've helped you with uh the feedback frenzy section as well before on my patreon but uh you know we covered a little bit there about changing the pose and opening that up so i spread out the pose more uh, rather than having it more contained and closed in. So just freed up that pose. But now that we've got the final, I'd love to push this further. So first off, I think that the head is just a bit too big. Uh, and I know we're trying to do a bit of foreshortening, but I actually think this head would work better if it's much smaller. Um, and it's not even so much the head itself. It's more the face, I would say. But what we're going to do is I'm just going to, we'll take the face out for now, and I'd like to redraw it. And it's not that there's anything wrong with it, it's more that the expression is a little different to what Ezio usually feels and expresses. You know, he doesn't really open his mouth in, in rage, because he's more of a controlled, kind of cool and calm assassin, you know. So I feel this kind of expression, it just doesn't really feel like Ezio. So I'm thinking something more like this, where the, uh, the mouth is... You know, more of a clench, you can have it, you can still show some teeth. Just uh, probably clench it a little bit more. And uh, so I'll just show before and after. So the mouth open is a little bit too much, I think. It's just just the scream. It, it, it's almost like he's screaming. Um, so yeah, I'd probably close that. And I've narrowed the, I've angled the face downward. So it's kind of tilting down uh, a little bit more. And his eyes are looking up. And I think that would be a really more, more of an intense kind of shot. I'm not 100% sure I've got the likeness of Ezio there, but you know what I mean, just putting the head down a bit. Uh, I think also, I, while we're at it, I, I want to fix this hand. So I just want to do a liquefy really quick. I, I want to lift that wrist up. You see what I'm doing with the wrist there? All right, so see that difference there? I just, just because there's a lot of armor around his wrist, 
I feel like it needs to be a lot thicker. Um, but what we're going to do is I'll just take that, that hand out and I'd like to redraw. When drawing this hand at this angle, um, I recommend drawing the top chunk first. So I like to draw it kind of like, think of it like this shape here. If you're going to treat it as a 3D object, kind of like that. You see that perspective there? That's the kind of thing. And then we're going to have the, fing the four fingers will come out of that. That's kind of how I like to treat it. And then the next part will be the, the palm underneath. And we would probably do like a bit of a shape kind of like that, okay? And if I was going to contour it, you know, you still want to have the contour looking downward. And then we're going to have the thumb kind of pop out of, of that section there. And then the bottom part will just be that nice last little chunk of filler there with the same kind of contouring around and up. And that's kind of how I'm going to attempt to do the, the hand here. So just as a rough, like something like that. And then, yeah, I'm going to have the the bottom where the thumb comes out about there. And then we'll just go right down into where the palm is on the other palm there, which can break up through the middle. Now, as for the fingers, I'll just do like stick figure lines. That's a really good way to start. So you just know where they're going to go. So we'll go one there. Uh, I'd like to have the, the little finger kind of bending down. Number two you can kind of go up here. And then down a little bit like that, remember? So we've got to have those breaks. So one, two, three joints in the fingers. And the middle finger can come right up a little higher. And I'd like to have that kind of up like that and then curl down. And then number four can go pretty high and we'll just have that curl up and out. And then the thumb can just come out here. So doing the little you know, joints like that is really handy. You can even start uh, placing in the meat around those. So you know, just the shapes of each joint. You know, start really rough, get those joints in. You can see what I'm getting at there with each section. You can now start to see where they belong. And then once I've got that super rough thing, we can actually fade that back and make an entirely new layer, which I can start filling in properly. And I'm just starting to think about the anatomy more now than anything. So the first one's more about structure and proportion. And now I'm going to start thinking about the anatomy. So the knuckles, thinking about those first before I start drawing in the rest of the fingers. Um, and now I can just start filling these out. And then the remainder, once I've got the structure and all that anatomy filled out, I can just start to do the little wrinkles, any kind of little wrinkles and folds that might be in within all this. So especially where the finger will be bending and even little, little bits in the knuckles. I'll just zoom in a little bit. So I'll get rid of that sketch now. Uh, and I can start to, yeah, put like little lines on the knuckles and things just for detail. And then for the blade, um, I feel like that blade, I like the perspective you've got, but it's a little too intense. The blade can be treated more like this. I'm pretty sure that's what the Assassin's Creed blade looks like, like the tip of a sword. Something like that, like so it's still got a bit of weight to it. Um, I feel like the original just kind of went a little bit too thin in the middle and a bit too wide out here. But yeah, there we go. So I've just colored it in a little bit. I'm not going to render it yet, but uh, yeah, that's about it. I think the rest looks fantastic. Uh, like I said, I love your pose. I'm not going to touch any of this. I really love how you've opened up that pose uh, and everything. So the original was here. I like the way you've rendered it too. Like you've got a nice painterly style and I like the color changes you've got going through here. You've got some nice colors. So I would just try and Focus on the hand and like the structure and the anatomy, things like that. So yeah, that's it. The face and the hand were the only issue for me. Uh, and just the wrist was a little bit, I'd like that a little thicker and that blade. But um, yeah, really good work there, Tropex. I think you've done a good job and um, yeah, love your work. So I hope that helps. And that is it for this monthly project. I hope you enjoyed the video. I really love what you've all done here. I just think it's absolutely amazing. I can't get over how awesome this video game piece is. That massive collaboration, big team effort there. So yeah, well done everyone. And if you're an artist and you'd like to join in on these monthly projects, head over to patreon.com slash Patrick Brown and uh, join in. There's a lot of other benefits, high resolution artwork, Photoshop documents and uh, competitions we've got these monthly projects and way more lots of tutorials but yeah check it out and that's it everyone thank you so much for watching and uh, i'll see you in the next video